Tool Hotkeys, Menu Shortcuts. Tool hotkeys are listed in the tool tip that appears when you position the cursor over any tool with the pointer. A hotkey in Vectorworks is one or more keys without the command key, Mac, or control key, Windows, for the modifier. For example, to activate the rectangle tool, simply press the 4 key. To activate the selection tool, press the X key. This is the 4 key in the row of numbers across the top of the keyboard, not the 4 in the numeric keypad if you have one. Menu shortcuts are listed across from the menu name each time you issue a command in the menu bar. Menu shortcuts are similar to the tool hotkeys in that their purpose is to invoke menu commands without moving the pointer. You can use the tool hotkeys and menu shortcuts interchangeably with the pointer methods described in this guide. Many hardcore users incorporate the menu shortcuts and tool hotkeys at some point along the way, once they're more familiar with the software. Either way, or a mixture of it at each method, can be best for you. The results are identical. The complete list of all the shipping tool hotkeys and menu shortcuts can be found in the user guide located in the Vectorworks help menu. Workspace. The general look of the controls around the document window is determined by the workspace. In Vectorworks, a workspace is an arrangement of tools, menus, and perhaps most importantly, the customizable shortcuts and hotkeys assigned to select menus, tools, and certain other functionality. For some users, using the keyboard more can streamline many tasks. You can customize your workspace with the workspace editor, so you can adapt parts of Vectorworks' interface to suit you. We'll be using the shipping workspace throughout this guide, however, so please don't change it at this time. It's worth noting that the shipping workspaces have been developed over time and have been given a substantial amount of thought by the folks who are intimately familiar with the use of the software. Therefore, you might want to continue using your workspace for a while to discover the logic behind its layout. If you're coming to Vectorworks after using other software, you'll find that, while the result you expect from other products is identical, ideally the way you use Vectorworks to achieve this result is substantially different. This is because Vectorworks, as with any software, presents a unique user model. This makes applying the approach of other software inefficient at best. A classic notion is to come to Vectorworks expecting to use the methods learned on other systems. So bring your high expectations, but make sure you leave your old methods behind while you get up to speed in Vectorworks. The illustration is a screenshot of the Vectorworks interface. To the far left are the tool palettes where you'll see rows of tool icons. All those little tool icons can be intimidating when you're first starting out, but we'll get you up to speed in short order. At the top is the basic tool palette. This is the palette we'll be using mostly at first. Notice the black arrow in the upper left of the basic tool palette, which when you click on it, makes the cursor look like a normal system cursor. This is the selection tool. Vectorworks always has a tool selected, even if it is the selection tool. The modes of the selected tool will be visible in the toolbar. Below the basic palette is a special palette called Tool Sets, which is a palette of palettes organized by task. We'll visit this palette occasionally in the exercises. Which palettes and tools that you see here depend on which Vectorworks product is installed. To the right of the drawing window is the Object Info palette. This palette reports the parameters, such as the size or location of the selected objects. You can edit the parameters of a selected object with the Object Info palette as well which causes the selected objects to adjust according to the new values. Below the object info palette in the lower right corner of the display is the navigation palette. There are seven tabs representing the different organizational structures that Vectorworks offers. You'll use these to give graphic, logical, and geometric meanings to the object in your project. Imbuing your projects with enough structure, but not too much, makes the job of adjusting the presentation of the project much easier especially late in the design process. Preferences. In Vectorworks, you can use a category of preferences called Vectorworks Preferences to change the way the program interacts with you. In fact, many of the settings are used to let Vectorworks work the way it used to work in previous versions. It's worth noting that the shipping preference set has been developed over time and has been given a substantial amount of thought by folks who are intimately familiar with the software. So, you may consider using most preferences the way they're installed, at least for a while, to take advantage of this collective experience. 
Nevertheless, these preferences are provided so that you can adjust them if you prefer. All Vectorworks preferences apply to your account on a specific machine. Vectorworks writes separate preference sets for each account on the same machine. Another category of preferences is document preferences that apply to individual files. This preference set has items that you may need to adjust so that certain special purpose files behave appropriately. Once you've identified the need for any of these preferences, you can make a template or stationary file with any document preferences, which opens a copy of the template with the document preferences already applied. 